Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. As you come into the room, I'm going to ask that you choose the language you'd like to hear this webinar in. So you see at the bottom bar, you get to choose between English or Arabic. Um, so if you'd like English, choose English. If you'd like Arabic, go ahead and select Arabic. Thank you. Okay. Rami, I think we are good to start. Yeah, now I can start? Yes. Okay. Hello and welcome to you today. We are in a series of the 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 series of باللغة العربية لكي نقدم مادة مهمة من مجموعة من الخبراء من الأكاديميين والمتخصصين والدبلوماسيين والكبراء في منطقة الشرق الأوسط حول هذا الأمر وهو للمرة الأولى أن تتوفر مادة في اللغة العربية حول هذا الأمر يسرنا للعام الثاني على التوالي أن نتشرف بوجود البروفيسور محمد سعد الدجاني معنا نشكرك في البداية بروفيسور دجاني على تلبية الدعوة والمشاركة معنا اليوم ولكن قبل أن أترك الدور لبروفيسور دجاني اسمحوا لي أن أقوم بتقديم سريع حول شخص بروفيسور الدجاني بروفيسور محمد سعد الدجاني هو ولد في مدينة القدس وهو باحث وناشط فيما يخص السلام حصل على درجتي دكتوراه من جامعة جنوب كارولينا وجامعة كولومبيا في عام 1980 وحصل على الدكتوراه الأخرى من جامعة تكساس في أوستن في عام 1984 في العام 2007 أسس بروفيسور الدجاني حركة الوسطية التي تدعو إلى التصالح والاعتدال والتعاون والسلام هو أيضا أستاذ عمل أستاذ للعلوم السياسية وترأس وترأس وتأسس قسم العلوم السياسية في جامعة القدس في من العام 2002 أثناء حتى العام 2014 في عام 2000 وفي مارس تحديدا في العام 2014 هو استحب لأول مرة 27 طالب فلسطيني لزيارة معسكرات الاعتقال النازية أوشويتس بيركناو لتعريفهم بالتجربة القسية التي مر بها اليهود وأهمية أن نتعلم من من هذه التجربة وكيف الكرهية ممكن أن تصنع هذا الموت الكبير الذي رأيناه في تجربة الهولوكوست ولكن أنا أعرف بشكل شخصي أن بعد هذه الرحلة وهو معروف للجميع أيضا أن بعد هذه الرحلة تعرض بروفيسور الدجاني لكثير من المضايقات والتهديدات التي وصلت إلى حد التهديد بالقتل ووضع حياته في خطر وتم حرق سيارته وعلى وإثر ذلك غادر بروفيسور دجاني اضطر لأن يغادر مدينة القدس التي ولد وكبر فيها لكي يكون في الولايات المتحدة وعمل خلال تلك الفترة كزميل في معهد واشنطن لدراسات المعهد البرموك معهد واشنطن لدراسات الشرق الأدنى بروفيسور دجاني هو مؤلف العديد من الدراسات والكتب وله مقالات ظهرت في العديد من الصحف العالمية والهامة سواء كان باللغة العربية أو اللغة الإنجليزية وهو أيضا حاصل على العديد من الجوائز منها جائزة دكتورة جين ماير جروبر سيتيزن شيب أورد للاعتراف بدوره المهم وعمل المهم وتشجيعه على الحوار ما بين الأديان هذه طبعا مقدمة بسيطة أقل بكثير مما يستحق بروفيسور الدجاني مرة أخرى رحب بحضرتك وهو سيكون معنا اليوم ليحدثنا عن معادات السمية والعدالة والقضية الفلسطينية أهلا وسهلا بروفيسور الدجاني تشرفنا جدا بحضورك الدور معك شكرا لدعواتكم ويسعدني أن أكون معكم أرجو أن نبدأ بفيديو قصير لسيانان لشرح العمل التي نقوم بها 
the showdown between Russia and Ukraine demonstrates how hard it is to understand the story of the other. The struggle over narratives dates back at least to the time of the Passover, which begins tonight, when Pharaoh kept the people of Moses in bondage. So now imagine a world where imagining the other could mean deliverance for warring sides, such as Israelis and Palestinians. In what may be a first, Mohammed Dajani, a Palestinian professor at the Al-Quds University in East Jerusalem, recently took 27 of his students to Auschwitz, the notorious concentration camp in Poland. The idea was to promote greater understanding between peoples, and yet, Professor Dajani was branded by many of his own people as a traitor. He proudly calls himself a Palestinian nationalist, but he's also a fan of the renowned Israeli author Amos Oz, who appeared on this program four years ago to talk precisely about understanding the other. He came with a Palestinian lawyer whose son had been killed and who had commissioned an Arabic translation of Oz's work. Uh, first of all, I think uh, to know the other side is something important, whether we want to fight him or whether we want to pe make peace with him. Uh, and knowledge is a light uh, for good and for bad. So if knowledge is the light, Oz himself also spoke of the importance of translating and understanding the other. I am a great believer in literary translations between enemies as a healer, as a method of removing stereotypes and replacing the hatred by more complex, not necessarily by love, but it will improve the ability to imagine the other. And I believe imagining the other is a moral quality. Meantime, Professor Dejani has defied his critics, saying, quote, I do not regret for one second what I did. As a matter of fact, I will do it again if given the opportunity. I will not hide. I will not deny. I will not be silent. I will not remain a bystander, even if the victims of suffering I show empathy for are my occupiers. Powerful words indeed. Thank you, Daphne. Uh, Can we share the PowerPoint? Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the aim of this presentation is to help non-Arabs and Arabs and uh, is um, sorry. The name of this presentation is to help non-Arabs understand the Arab anti-Semitic psyche by exploring uh, deep into the Arab mind and anti-Semitic literature. It explores Arabs' anti-Semitism tendencies in comparison with Western and Jewish uh, tendencies. Sorry trying to take care because I think it's too large this. I'm not seeing part of the, yeah. uh, okay. The questions to address is how do Arabs perceive anti-Semitism? Is anti-Semitism a precedent, uh, a pre precedent for the Arab-Israeli conflict or a consequence of it? Is criticism of Israeli policies and practices against the Palestinians and the occupied territories anti-Semitic? Uh, what steps uh, could be taken? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, to combat anti-Semitism. The imprisoned Arab mind, where we are today. Uh, sorry, but the PowerPoint is not moving. Professor, do you want to share the screen on your your end? 
Yeah, can we can we do that? Yes. Okay, so go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, one moment. Okay. Is it okay now? We don't see your screen. Uh, how do we do that? Um, do you see the green logo at the bottom say share yeah, screen? Yeah, yeah. So click that and then a pop-up will show and then you click your PowerPoint there. Yeah. Come on, please. Um, sorry, what I cannot do it. It's not. Uh... Professor, um, you can just, I can continue to do it and just tell me whenever you want me to move the slides. Okay. Okay, so sure. just give me a nod and then I'll change the slides for you. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to get the PowerPoint again. Do you see mine on the screen? I'm trying, I, now I see it, yeah. Okay, so whenever you want a new slide, just let me know and I'll, I'll go next. Just uh, if you can move it. Yeah. Okay, now I'm fine. Uh, where we want to be is setting the Arab mind free to go beyond the present situation. Uh, okay, how do you move it on? So I move it for you. So let me know and I'll move it. No, no, just move it. When I finish, okay. just move it. Okay. Okay. Defining anti-Semitism. Sorry. Let me try to see if I can share it. Go ahead. Is it, I can move the screen for you. Do you see it? I don't see it. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, no, go back to defining uh, anti-Semitism or this is how it is. No, can you, sorry about that. We are can at we, a different. Can we start from the. Here? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going back. Which slide would you like me to be at? Just move on, move on. What is, can I, can't I uh, move it on? You need, I need to move it for you. So just let me know or okay. you can share it. Okay. Move it. Historical roots of Arab anti-Semitism. Anti you need this page, Professor, or another one? Here. Wait, let me try to see if I can share. You cannot start screen share with while the other participant is sharing. Yeah, so, try now. I just finished my screen share. Okay. Uh, one moment. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's good. So, I'll do one more, please. If you can click uh, zoom or maximize, that would be great. No. Okay. Yes. Great. Perfect. We're back. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you. thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. No problem. Um, Historically, anti-Semitism is a European product 
important to the Arab world by the Europeans and their literature of basic conspiratorial ideas expressed by all anti-Semitic texts. Those found a receptive audience among extremist groups uh, dedicate and their dedicated followers in a, society, in a backward traditional uh, society. Nazi propaganda in the 1930s and 1940s helped spread anti-Semitism among the Arab population who viewed Zionism threatening Arab national aspirations of freedom and independence. The Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajamin Husseini, helped spread anti-Semitism by interpreting the Quran as anti-Jewish and quoting often the infamous book, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. In the aftermath of the 1948 Palestinian Nakba and the declaration of the Jewish state of Israel on what was considered by Arabs as the homeland of the Palestinians, anti-Semitic, anti-Zionism, anti-Jewish, anti-Israel, anti-US, anti-imperialist, anti-Western rhetoric were frequently mixed by officials, political leaders, parties, teachers, writers, journalists, etc. Anti-Semitism today is flourishing in the Arab world. It is incited in textbooks and by government officials, which are not, uh, uh, which are not keen on it, its denunciation. It has been amplified by a conspiratorial culture and the social media. To address the controversy of what, over what constitutes anti-Semitism, the litmus test is the question, where is the epicenter of anti-Semitism? The traditional Western definition of anti-Semitism is hatred of Jews as faith and race. It is an assault on Jews for being Jews. Jews are its victims, but not its cause. It is based on the ancient accusation that, that the Jews murdered Jesus. The current Zionist definition of anti-Semitism as to anti-Judaism, anti-Zionism, and anti-Israel. Sharansky's definition of the three Ds is demonization of Jews and Israel, delegitimization of Jews and Israel, double standard when Israel is held to a double standard. The Arab definition of anti-Semitism is anti-Jewish enmity, hatred, and racism. It does not include anti-Zionism and anti-Israel enmity, hatred, or criticism. By accident, the Moroccan cartoonist Naji Benaji was awarded a special prize for drawing two bottles. The Holocaust bottle contains a few skulls. The Palestinian one is full of skulls. Would this be considered anti-Semitism? The American Ben & Jerry ice cream company boycotted the export of its products to the Israeli settlements established on Palestinian soil. It considered them to be illegal settlements. Israel responded to this boycott by accusing the company of anti-Semitism. Does the company's action constitute anti-Semitism? Demonstrators chanting the slogan, uh, O Heber, O Jews, Muhammad's army will return, or carrying banners saying, God bless Hitler. Is this anti-Semitism or freedom of speech? Is comparing Israel with Nazi Germany anti-Semitism or freedom of expression? Does a book titled Nazi Israel constitute anti-Semitism? Is a book claiming Jews manufactured the Holocaust anti-Semitism? Is Holocaust denial anti-Semitism? The book's title, The Jewish Holocaust Lie, Did Six Million Jews Actually Perish? The Historic Lie, Are These Anti-Semitism? Are the books, The Holocaust, The Biggest Lie in Modern History, Anti-Semitism? Is comparing the Palestinian Nakba with the Jewish Holocaust anti-Semitism? Are books narrating Jewish revenge in the aftermath of the Holocaust, anti-Semitism. Is writing about a Nazi Zionist collaboration 
during World War II anti-Semitism. Is calling for boycotting Israel or the destruction of Israel anti-Semitism. When the Islamic Republic of Iran threatens to annihilate Israel, is this anti-Semitism? Does the cartoon reflect anti-Semitism? Some may argue that this falls under the democratic freedom of speech and expression. Others label this anti-Semitism. Yet, if there is confusion of what to call them, no doubt they do incite anti-Semitism and Jewish hatred directly or indirectly, particularly among the younger generation. A thorn is a thorn, no matter what name you give it. The litmus test, when Jews and Israel are attacked just for being Jews, Jews and Jewish, it is anti-Semitism. But when Israel is attacked, for its occupation policies and criticized for their illegality, uh, illegal repressive nature, uh, occupation repressive nature, it is not anti Semitism. There is much self criticism by Israelis themselves regarding various governmental policies. Such self criticism is viewed as a legitimate part of the democratic debate. It is the right. So it is to have the right to criticize Israel, whether non-Israelis provided red lights are not crossed. Condemning Israel, uh, condemning Israeli occupation does not imply condemning Israelis or the Jews of the world and their hatred, especially since increasing groups of Jews in Western societies have begun to disavow Israel's policies and practices and support Palestinian rights and peaceful coexistence. Palestinian anti-Israeli resistance is not based on hatred of, for Jews as faith and race, but is motivated by national incentives to end the Israeli occupation. The targets of anti-Semitism in the West reflect ordinary Jewish life, such as Holocaust survivors, Jewish cemeteries, synagogues, museums, etc. The target of resistance in Palestine represent the Israeli government and reflect its occupation policies. Israel is not attacked for being Jewish, but for its occupation. This excludes religious fanatics. Arab anti-Semitic prejudices are a mixture of religious anti-Jewish education and political anti-Zionism and anti-Israeli incitement and sentiments. Arab moderates distinguish between the anti-Zionism, anti-Israel rhetoric stand and the prevailing anti-Jewish prejudice. Anti-Semitism in Arab publications. Martin Luther, uh, for instance, there are, there are there are many books in Arabic which are anti-Semitic and which are uh, translated to Arabic and they receive a lot of popularity. For instance, uh, Martin Luther's book, uh, Jews and Their Lies, The Hypocrisy of Jews. Martin Luther called for synagogues to be burned and for rabbis to stop from their work on pain of death. Henry Ford and the international Jew criticized Jews as foreigners seeking to infiltrate the US society and spark a com communist revolution. These are books that are reprinted within the Arab uh, world. Uh, this is the uh, Henry Ford, the international Jew, the protocols of the elders of Zion. The first problem facing the world in this book is the in the international uh, Judaism is about, it, it talks about the uh, uh, protocols of the elders of the Zion as the first problem that faces the world. The protocols of the elders of Zion. Since the, 19, since the 1950s, the protocols of the elders of Zion has become one of the most popular books in the Arab world. Several versions were issued in Arabic and printed in Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, 
Jordan, and Palestine, and other countries. These are based on the original book with, its, with various introductions. The translations aim to sell, uh, uh, to create interest, such as incitement against the state of Israel and the Zionist movement and spreading hatred towards Jews. New publications include introductions with, by well, written by well-known people, such as Egyptian author Abbas Mahmoud Laqad, to reach out to the masses. They are printed in high artistic quality by well-known publishing houses with the aim of giving credibility to what is stated in the book. The cover image sometimes expresses anti-Semitism in its appearance. The books are sold cheaply in order to spread widely. I'm showing now examples of this book. This is one of the original books that was published back in 1951. It is by Muhammad Khalif al Tunisi, and it is titled The Jewish Danger The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The first full tra Arab translation of the most dangerous book in the world is the subtitle. And then these are various copies, and look at the covers. This is an octopus, for instance, uh, to be on the cover, showing with the Star of David. Uh, Ajaj Nawayed's book, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, was published in 68, and the Lebanese poet Saeed Akil wrote in his review of Ajaj Nawayed's book, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, Israel, before you published this book, could have been considered a military threat only, a military, a military threat only, but after your publication, it becomes a moral danger. So here we have the protocols of the elders of Zion, printed and reprinted and published in various forms and various publications by various uh, publishers. And uh, with the book cover uh, indicating a conspiratorial uh, plot by Jews. And so, and this is the various uh, copies. The here, yeah, for instance, in this book, uh, it's uh, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, Masonic Plans for World Domination. It links Zionism, Nazism, Communism, and Masons. Uh, also, these are different various uh, copies of the uh, protocols. Copies of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion with new translations continue to circulate in the Arab world and to inspire anti Semitic publications. Uh, yeah. Adasa Benito wrote It is the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is a lie which refuses to die. And he is very, very right in that. Another publication widely circulating in the Arab world is Adolf Hitler's book, Kifahi, My Kampf, My Struggle. And you can notice here the various topic. This is uh, My Struggle, uh, translated by the Lebanese writer, uh, Al -Hajj, uh, Louis Al Hajj, in which he says that Hitler, he describes in his preface that Hitler is the most important political personality in the 20th century. And putting his photo on a book's cover increases its circulation by 20%. He did not put this, seems he did not want the circulation 20%. But, uh, and these are various copies I'm showing. And, and I don't think there is an, uh, any international leader which received all these uh, publications and the and the in, the, in the Arabic about him, and all these are different various publications, whether in uh, Damascus, in Cairo, in uh, different parts of the Arab capitals. Even in, uh, even talking about different and about Hitler in all different ways, and these are more than fifty publications, unbelievable. And then some do defend Hitler, Hitler and. The for, and the forgery of history. Yeah, and this book is to support Hitler. And uh, there are, this is even his hobbies that he, he likes to watch movies. 
and his relation with Mussolini. Also other publications as William Carr's book, The Jews Behind Every Crime. And you notice that it, is, it has been republished. And look at the uh, caricature, and it is very anti-Semitic character, or whether on the first page or the second page, the second, or the book on the corruption of Jews, or the, in this series of Enemies of Islam, it talks about the title of the book is Jewish Plots Throughout History. It is published in 78. And also translations of uh, anti-Semitic books or people who are anti-Semites or people who are Semites but are anti-Israel, such as Chomsky and Yerudi, are very popular. The religious character of Arab anti-Semitism, it is uh, taught in schools the uh, the uh, anti-Jewish, the the Quran is being translated from an anti-Jewish perspective, and so and young kids grow up to wanting to be martyrs, or in this case, wanting talking about uh, Jews as uh, pigs, uh, which comes from a, it's a misinterpretation of the Quranic verse which says God penalized Sabbath breakers by making them apes and Jews. So it is not a generalization, yet it is being taught as if it is a generalization. Also within the religious sermons that uh, there are um, also very anti-Jewish uh, anti, uh, uh, sermons that are being uh, circulating in mosques by extreme zeal zealots. Even in the, Quran, in the Quran, it is being translated uh, or misinterpreted. They cannot change the text of the Quran. So what they do is try to misinterpret the, uh, the text. And for instance, here in Al-Fatiha, which says uh, that um, uh, it says um, to, to the my uh, if you are uh, sorry guide us to the right straight path the path of those you have blessed not those who uh, who incurred your anger or those who are misguided so here in the uh, below in the uh, Quranic text uh, they cannot change within the text itself but what they do is write down to say that the uh, God bestowed his grace or the, his blessings about, uh, to Muslims and those who earned his anger or wrath are Jews and those who went astray are Christians. Although the true or the Quranic uh, passage is, uh, should be interpreted to mean that the path of those you, whom you have bestowed your grace are the righteous, not the path of those who, who had your wrath which are the infidels, or those who went astray, which are the hypocrites, the unbelievers. So it, it has nothing to do about Jews or Christians. But this is how it is being uh, written down within the same page. Also, one of the most widespread hadith attributed to the Prophet, saying that on Judgment Day, uh, the Judgment Day will not arrive until the Muslims fight the Jews and the Muslims will kill them. Even if a Jew hides behind the rock or the tree, the rock or the tree will say, O oh Muslim, O oh worshiper of God, there is a Jew behind me, kill, come and kill him, except the salt push. So this is, this is uh, a fabricated hadith. It is not in the Quran and it is in, in total contradiction to the Quran, yet uh, it is being taught by muftis and by uh, religious leaders. Uh, because they, uh, it is quoted in um, the Muslim hadith, Muslim hadith, and uh, so they consider it to be true instead of using their mind and reading the Quran and seeing that it, it cannot be true. Also, the caricature. This is a very anti-Semitic Semitic caricature that is being taught, uh, which says. With the Jews saying, "Oh, the tree is calling upon the, uh, yeah, upon the Muslim to, uh, telling him there is Jew behind me, come kill him." So all this anti-Semitic 
uh, undercurrent really uh, affects a lot the literature, the culture, and how people are being raised. So, how to combat that? The ideology of absolute rejectionism and genocide can only def be defeated by the Wasatiya ideology of moderation, temperance, temperance and uh, uh, middle ground. Mary Wise, in her book, How to Fight Antisemitism, offers insightful strategies to, op to oppose antisemitism and uh, outlining the methods to achieve that objective. She sees the end goal of antisemitism as the elimination of the Jewish people and Israel. In the Arab world, Wasatiya is combating antisemitism. A strategy includes teaching empathy. That's why we took the students to Auschwitz and we, we, do, we published a book about the Holocaust and we try to make workshops in order to promote Holocaust education and we pressure the PA in order to include the Holocaust education within its curriculum. Addressing religious prejudices, uh, we try to uh, challenge all the misinterpretation of the Quran that pictures the, um, uh, the, Quran, the Quran text as anti-Jewish and anti-Christian by asserting that the Quran itself uh, promotes Christianity, promotes Islam, promotes Judaism, prom promotes their prophets, promotes their books, and as a, uh, and as such, uh, there, there should be an end to religious intolerance. So we promote Wasatiya culture in this sense in order to, uh, to reach out and build bridges among uh, Jews, Christians, and uh, uh, Muslims and, and seculars. Here, yeah, and for instance, we, we spread the religious tolerance. For instance, we spread stories which are positive, such as uh, the story told in this book about when two je jealous wives of Prophet Muhammad, this Safiya, the new young, beautiful Jewish wife of the Prophet for being a Jewess, it was Muhammad himself who in the end coached her to retort, how can you be above me when Aaron is my father, Moses is my uncle, and Muhammad is my husband. This worked effectively. So this is a quote from the book, the Aisha, the beloved wife of the prophet. So what we do is we try in Wasatiya to uh, quote Jewish text or Christian text and bring it within the Islamic culture in order for Palestinians to get uh, acquainted with the culture of the other, whether it has religion, whether it's tradition, whether it is literature, poems, and culture and traditions. Also to facilitate interfaith dialogue between various groups, overcoming enmity, bigotry, hatred, and calling out hateful speech and actions. So anti-Semitism is a disease more, more, more uh, killing than even the uh, corona because the corona is a virus and you address it in, in an united way, but the anti-Semitism is something that goes deep in the culture and that's where it should be fought. So we need, we need to seek also peaceful resolution for the Palestinian-Israeli conflict because part of the way an, uh, anti-Semitism is spreading is by using the Arab-Israeli conflict as a cause for passing over the hate from one generation to the next. Any concluding remark, anti-Semitism threatens us all. We need to renew our humanistic values to guide us to take the right path. We should have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism. Thank you very much for, for your attention.
شكرا جزيلا بروفيسور محمد دجاني على هذا ال... على... على على هذا التقديم الرائع ودعني لو تسمح لي ان اقوم بتلخيص سريع لاهم النقاط التي جاءت في هذه المحاضره القيمه وان هناك استيراد لافكار معادات السميه من من الثقافه الاوروبيه وحتى ما يوجد في معادات السميه في ويستخدمه بعض المسلمين او الاسلاميين للتبرير لمعادات السميه هو نتاج عمليه خاطئه من تفسير خاطئ ل سواء كان الايات الموجوده في القران لا تخص اليهود او او الاحاديث وبعض هذه الاحاديث ليست احاديث صحيحه وان الحل الوحيد هو ان يكون هناك نشر لثقافه الوسطيه وثقافه الاعتدال والتصالح والتسامح وهذا هو المشروع الذي يعمل عليه الدكتور دجاني منذ فتره طويله لسنوات طويله وقد دفع ثمن كثير سواء كان في على المستوى المهني والاكاديمي او سواء كان على المستوى الشخصي كما اشرت في بدايه التقديم انه تم استهدافه بشكل شخصي وتعرضت حياته للخطر العديد من المرات. بروفيسور دجاني يعني وردتنا العديد من الاسئله اريد ان اتوجه ببعض منها اليك وسع يعني اختار الاسئله غير المتشابهه حتى نستطيع ان نستغل الوقت المتبقي. انا بعتقد انك انت اجبت على هذا السؤال ولكن للامانه سوف اقوم بسؤاله يعني هناك العديد يقولون ان هناك جذور لمعادات السميه في الاسلام وهذه جذور دينية ويعلل ذلك بأن جماعات الإسلام السياسي أو جماعات مثل حماس تستخدم ذلك كزريعة للترويج لمعادات السامية بناء على على خلفية دينية وعلى أسس دينية حتى تشرع ماذا تفعل هذا السؤال الأول السؤال الثاني هو كيف يمكن انتقاد إسرائيل كدولة دون الوقوع في مشكلة معادات السامية يعني كيف يمكن أن تنتقد السياسات الإسرائيلية أن تنتقد إسرائيل دون العبور الخط الأحمر والدخول في منطقة معادات السامية هؤلاء يعني أبرز الأسئلة التي أتت إلينا التي تلخص مجموع الأسئلة بشكل عام من الصحيح it is true that um... There is uh, an infusion of uh, religious rhetoric into the anti-Semitic uh, sphere in the sense that uh, extremists use uh, Islam and use the Quran and use the Hadith in order to promote anti-Semitism as if it is part of Islamic teaching, which is, which is not true because if you read the Quran, the Quran stresses that uh, you will not be a true a believer unless you believe in God, his apostles, his books, his angels, and uh, his prophets. And uh, including in that are the prophets of uh, the Jews, the Christians, and Muhammad of Islam. However, they go and misinterpret the text to be anti-Jewish or to be anti-Christian. And like the example I gave you, uh, it is more in the interpretation. It is the singer, not the song. And if you read, and they depend on the fact that people do not read the Quran. Even many Muslims don't read the Quran, and depend on the preachers to tell them what's in the Quran. And so they mix uh, much between what is uh, fake and mythologies in the. Uh, and their interpretations and the Quranic uh, and the Quranic scripture, Holy Scripture. So that's where one has to be careful. And uh, if one reads well the interpretation, like for instance, when they say that the Quran describes Jews as apes and uh, pigs, it's not true. What the Quran is saying is that God punished the Sabbath breakers. And in Judaism, the Sabbath breakers are punished by death. And the Quran, it says that God turns them into pigs and apes. And it is not a generalized text, but rather about Jews, but rather about those who break uh, the God's order or God's word. Uh, regarding, so uh, regarding the second question is that there is a difference between, and for instance, in the Arab uh, rhetoric, political rhetoric, 
we have before 1967, uh, between 48 and uh, uh, 67, we have been using the word Israel to encompass all Israel because we never studied Israel. We didn't know what Israel stands for and what about all the different trends within Israel. Once in, in the last 10 years, let me say, that there is more Arabs scholars studying the um, Israeli community. And it is true that uh, uh, you have two Jews and you have three opinions. So here within Israel, when you say Israel, you are mixing those who are for peace and uh, with those who are anti-peace. And that's where we have to make a distinction between those who are thinking in terms of the big dream of building Israel from river to sea uh, without taking into consideration there is a Palestinian population there and those who would like uh, to share the land and who would like to live in, co uh, in peaceful coexistence. So we have to make a distinction between those two groups within the, our two camps within the Israeli society within Israel so when we are criticizing Israel as a policy which is adopting the occupation and expanding that occupation and its appetite for settlements is not satisfied and continues to confiscate land and continues to uh, in its aggressive and repressive policies, you cannot be a human and not criticize that. And this is part of human rights. And so you cannot ignore it. And uh, because one day you will be asked, where were you when Israel was transgress transgressing against Palestinian rights, about their human rights? Where were you? So that's where you know, even Jews are standing by the Palestinians in support of their rights, but the ultra Jews and the ultra-Palestinians are calling for a river, for a state from river to sea, ignoring there are millions of people on, on this piece of land from river to sea. What do you want to do with them? Do you want to do a Holocaust for the Jews or do you want to throw the Palestinians in the sea? And this is totally unacceptable. And that's why sharing the land is what needs to be done. And in this way, we need to make that distinction between those within Israel who are for expand, expand for expansion and for rejection, rejecting Palestinian rights, and those who are within also within the Israeli community, uh, within the Palestinian community, who do not recognize uh, Israeli rights. So we have to acknowledge each other and to try to find a solution in order to live with each other. Shukran, uh, Professor Dajani. But I have a question and a question for the important thing that you have to me in the meeting. You have to me the long-term use of the Palestinian question to share the year. I am talking about the last year there was an introduction to the Arab Spring and the Arab Spring and the Israel. We have seen reports and reports ترى ان ذلك التطبيع وان ان ان عمليه السلام التي ستنطلق او التي انطلقت بالفعل في المنطقه هي عمل سلبي مواجه ضد القضيه الفلسطينيه. اريد ان اسمع من حضرتك كيف ترى هذه الاصوات هل فعلا عمليات التطبيع والسلام الاخيره هي ضد القضيه الفلسطينيه وكيف يمكن ان 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 نقف استغلال مسمى القضيه الفلسطينيه للترويج للعنف والمعاداه السلميه. Let me first say that the word normalization, which is a term now which is very popular in Palestinian rhetoric, is meaningless. It does not mean anything. It means going back to normal, and uh, which there was no normal to go back to. And there has been always conflict. So when they, and also when they, they are talking about anti-normalization, the question I asked them, what is, the, what is your goal? 
Is your goal peace or war? We have seen what war has, has done. So if it is peace, how can you not achieve peace with, with anti-normalization? How can you achieve peace with, without building bridges with the people, with building walls and hatred and enmity? So if your end goal is survival and peace and coexistence, then your, your way to get there, to pave the way to there is by normalization, not anti-normalization. And why do you blame these Arab countries for normalizing with Israel after having waited for you for all these years without any uh, result? And let us not forget that it was the Palestinians in 1993 who normalized the relationship with, with Israel and recognized Israel. And so these countries are not doing anything which is contrary to what the Palestinian did. The Palestinian found that it was in their interest to normalize the relationship. These Arab countries, 20 years later, found that it is in their, in their interest to normalize relation. And in international uh, relations, it is known, there are no permanent friends, there are no permanent enemies, there are permanent interests. And so states go according to their national interest. And it is in the national interest of these countries is to normalize relation. Now, the mistake of the Palestinian Authority is not to understand that and uh, to fight it rather than to go along with it and uh, to try to use it for its own advantage in order to build bridges between, uh, between the Arabs and the Israelis so that these bridges will eventually achieve peace. And so this was a mistake by the PA. I consider it a strategic mistake. I call upon them to rectify this and to try, like they are using now Jordan and Egypt as bridges to build relation, a better relation with Israel, to use the Arab countries who had normalized their relation with Israel as also bridges to reach out to, to the Israeli peace camp within Israel. And in this way, that, that's the only way we can have peace. Okay, Professor, but uh, I asked you as well about uh, how we can, how do we can stop using the term of Palestinian cause uh, as a pretext for spreading anti-Semitism among Arab people and Muslim people and Muslim community even abroad in Europe and in the United States and everywhere. It is through education, through public awareness. And we have to have more uh, dialogue. We have to have to promote you know, education. And this is, we have to start from the kindergarten. And we have to go back to building a culture of peace. So far, what we have is a culture of conflict, despite all the Oslo efforts and the peace process. And so we have to go back and rebuild from scratch and from the kindergarten to rebuild the gen the, a new generation that calls for peace, that believes in the Abrahamic faith, that does not make, does, does not believe that we, Islam came to replace other religions, but rather that Islam came to complement the messages of other religions. Not that it was missing, anything missing, but it came for different people in different times. And so Islam as a message came in Arabia. It did not come in Jerusalem or Palestine where there was, where there was, uh, uh, Judaism and Christianity it came in Saudi Arabia and in the Arabian Peninsula, Arabian Peninsula, where there were more than 500 uh, deities worshipped. So it was a message to those people there who were infidels in order to to get them to know the message of God. So that's part. Although the message, all the religious messages are for humanity in general, but. To each, to each people, their culture. Okay, at the end, I'd like to thank you so much, Professor Bajani, for joining us today and for this amazing, outstanding presentation. For now, I would like to thank you very much, Professor Bajani, for the support of this great effort that you are doing. Thank you very much for your great effort that you are doing without a delay.
رغم كل المضايقات ورغم كل الـ 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 الملاحقات من المتطرفين التي تتعرض لها أشكرك جزيلا ويعني أتمنى لك أشكر. موضوع الصحة والسعادة أشكركم على دعوتي وأشكر الحضور على حضورهم واستماعهم وأمل أن نلتقي في المستقبل آمين إن شاء الله سنلتقي في المستقبل شكرا لكم جميعا على الحضور وتشريفكم لنا ودعوني أنا أدعوكم أن تكونوا معنا في الخامس والعشرين من اليناير في نفس التوقيت سيكون معنا متحدث متميز آخر وهو السفير إيزاك لبنون سفير الإسرائيل السابق في جمهورية مصر العربية سيتحدث لنا عن مظاهر معدات السامية ما بين الماضي والحاضر كونوا معنا ونتشرف جدا بكم وتحية لكم جميعا أتمنى لكم أوقات سعيدة شكرا جزيلا